Um, so we're going to talk about CloudWatch metric math. Um, Bob, Helen, can you tell me a little bit about what you're launching today? Yeah, absolutely, Abby, and thanks. It's great to be here. We're super excited. So today we have a new feature for CloudWatch metrics, and it's called CloudWatch metric math. And what this does is it lets customers use metrics that they already have in their CloudWatch accounts and transform them to get additional insights into the different aspects of their application health, performance, and utilization. So these insights come through applying mathematical expressions to metrics. So we have simple mathematical expressions, so you can add metrics, you can divide metrics, all the way up to more complex statistical functions such as standard deviation. So you can take the standard deviation of a set of metrics and, and put that on a graph. So today this is available in our console. So in the metric tab and in our dashboard, you can create metric math expressions. It's also available in API forms. We're also launching a new API today that supports both metric math and it lets customers get additional metric data in each metric data call that they couldn't with the Get Metric Statistics API. So bottom line here, I collect a lot of metrics through CloudWatch and I can learn more, I can kind of do more advanced metrics, but I can get more insights from the data that I'm collecting. Absolutely, so it, you, know, you, you might have had to do additional compute infrastructure or coding to do it before. Now right. you don't have to write any code, you don't have to spin up any new AWS resources, just directly in the console you create these simple math expressions and get this new insight out of your data. I feel like those are my favorite kind of features, are the ones that they just work, that I don't have to, I don't have to do anything else yeah. to make them work. They just kind of <laughs> happen for me because I don't ever want to have to configure anything myself. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how people are, how you think people are going to use this? Yeah, so you know, CloudWatch is a monitoring tool for application and service owners. And so our customers tend to be system engineers, developers, IT managers, operators, really anybody that cares about the health, performance, and utilization of an application. And what's important to these customers is this ability to see. So a lot of times I talk about this, CloudWatch is really helping customers see because to, to understand the, the application, understand whether it's performing what you want, you have to be able to see things about the resources you're using, see things about the infrastructure you're using, and see things about the application itself. And so metric math is helping customers get this new way to see data that they already had, but they can see it in new and interesting ways that really gives them unique insight into those you know, the important details of their application. So can you give me some insight on, on, on why you guys built this? So I know that we're, you're getting more insights from your data and from your metrics. Can you tell me about why you built this? So how are, how are organizations using this that you went out and built metric math on top of CloudWatch? Yeah, so we've been hearing from a lot of customers that they really wanted to do these, these kinds of use cases. And I think there's probably three common patterns that I'll talk about briefly. So first is the ability to aggregate metrics. So let's take a customer that may be running a, an instance of their service in each availability zone so that they can handle different types of failure scenarios. With metric math, they can have metrics for each zone so they can understand how their stack is performing in each zone, but then automatically roll it up to get visual, uh, views across their whole region and see the actual end performance they're providing to their end customers. The next second case is a percentage case. So where you want to have Take a, a load balancer metric where you have an account of errors or accounts of server client errors. And as an operator, I'm going to think really differently if it's 100 errors and 1,000 requests or 100 errors and a million requests. Right. And so with metric math, I can just create a graph and with a simple expression, I can divide those error counts by the total request count and easily see my availability as it's uh, playing out over time. And then last, I would say there's uh, common cases around ratios of things, th things like transactions or IOPS for Dynamo, for example, where you want to be able to turn those into a rate so that you can understand how they relate to the way you've provisioned it or maybe your account limits that are different AWS services have, have provided. So this has been awesome. I'm going to switch gears for a second because we have a demo, thanks to the <laughs> wonderful Helen. Helen, want to kick off with the demo? Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Bob, for sharing those metric math use cases. So what I want to demo to you guys now are the metric math use cases that Bob has just shared. As you can see on my screen here, I've logged into the CloudWatch console and I've clicked on the metrics tab and at a quick glance I can see all the metrics that are currently in my account. Now let's dive into my EBS metrics, which are my elastic block storage, which is typically um, storage attached to my EC2 volumes. So the metrics that I'm interested in are things like volume write-offs. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly do a search for that. And it filters down to just the relevant metrics with volume write-offs. So I'm going to click a couple of these to graph. I'm going to come to the Graph Metrics tab here, and you can see now there's a line underneath the tab that says Add a Math Expression. So if I were to click on that, essentially what you see on the console is there's a new line that populates, and in there there is an automatically suggested function, which is to sum the metrics. Now if I were to hit Enter, essentially what that does is it now creates a new expression here, which is the total volume write-offs 
across all of these EBS volumes that are currently graphs. So as you can see, I'm just renaming the metric so that I, the next time I log in, I know exactly what this metric expression means. Now, the total write-offs is a really interesting metric, but what I really want to know is I want to know what's my throughput, what's my rate metric. So I'm going to add another math expression here, and this time I'm going to pick one of the metrics, so you know, metric one, and I'm going to divide the volume write-offs by the total number of seconds that are in that metric period. Now, as you can see here, I have the metric period uh, set to five minutes, and I could, in my head, calculate you know, how many seconds are in five minutes, but, but I don't want to do any math Exactly, <laughs> yeah. same here. So I'll, <laughs> I'm going to make CloudWatch do that for me. So I'm going to do M1 divided by the period function, which will automatically calculate that for me. And as you can see, as I'm typing out this expression, CloudWatch is actually auto-suggesting functions and metric names to help me easily build out this expression. So I'm going to click Enter, and I'm going to hide all these and just show you the new expression that I've created here. And essentially what this metric now is, is uh, I've just converted into a right IOPS metric. So from here, you know, the next time I log into the CloudWatch console, I don't really want to go this, this whole discovery and recreation process. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click on Actions and click Add to Dashboard. And then when I do that, um, I'm going to find the dashboard that I'm interested in. So it's this particular one. Click Add to Dashboard. And as you can see, it actually auto-adds auto, auto adds the widget onto my operational dashboard. So I want to walk you through a couple of other ones that I've already pre-populated here. So I just show you how you can convert the right ops into an IOPS metric. Another one that a lot of our gaming customers, you know, video streaming services, mobile um, customers, and even internally ourselves, we use DynamoDB tables um, for, for part of our application. Now, two of the really most important metrics that DynamoDB ben, um, provides by default are the consume read and write, and also the provision read and write. So as you can see here in this graph, I have the, these two graphed. But what I really want to know is like how close am I to my provision limit? What's my percent utilization? And I can effectively calculate that by doing by taking the consumed read metric divided by the provision read and convert that into a percent utilization metric, which is what you see here on the left right here. And as you can see on this graph here, I've actually colored in these horizontal annotations to help me better understand how can I quickly interpret this, the metric values in my graph? So in this purple band here is what I call the over-provision band. And this is essentially maybe I've, I've given too much capacity to my DynamoDB and I don't really need it. Maybe I can scale back and save me a couple bucks. Um, and then in this green zone here is what I call the normal behavior. So this is what I would expect you know, a good application behavior to show. Now this is a derived metric um, that I basically computed by taking these default metrics that DynamoDB provides. I can actually add another math function on top of that and convert the percent utilization into percent available. So essentially I can take 100% available minus my current utilization and convert that into a percent available metric, which is what you see right here. And so at a quick glance I can see, hey, everything's good. I have 100% capacity left over to use. Now the last one is, you know, a lot of our customers, anyone who has a you know, web, web application, front end service, even internally here, we really care about the percent error rate or the fault rate metric because by proxy, it gives us an understanding of the availability of our service or application. And so, um, as you can see here, Lambda by default provides an error count metric and also an invocation count metric. So I can take errors divided by invocations and convert that into percent error, metric, or error rate metric. Now, you could easily do this with your ELB, with your load balancer metrics like Bob was mentioning earlier as well. Um, so it, from this demo, as you can see, you can take metric math functions and apply them to these default free metrics that you already have in your CloudWatch console and help you better analyze and understand sort of like the health and utilization of your resources. So some people on Twitch and I had the same follow-up question, which is my favorite CloudWatch feature is alarms. Can I alarm on my metric math evaluation? So if I, if I write a metric math expression, will I be able to trigger an alarm yeah. based on that? Yeah, so Abby, today we're starting out with the visualization capabilities. So the metric math today is giving you dashboard visualizations of these, which are powerful in and of themselves. We've heard this from customers too, and we're hard at work on adding that ability to CloudWatch alarms. So then in the future, you'll be able to define your CloudWatch alarms using the exact same math expressions as Helen showed here today. So it sounds like right now it's just the visualization part, but I'm working on making it so that they, you can evaluate metric math and regular CloudWatch expressions kind of the same way. Absolutely, yeah, and this is really that next logical extension. You know, I, I talked early on about the ability to see and how CloudWatch is really focused on seeing. 
that's the first step. The second step we talked about really to react because we know that as much as right. it's useful to see these things, you also want to be able to react to these things in real time so that you can fix an application problem that may be happening at that time. Yeah. I think, um, so some compliments on your presentation, by the way, because so many <laughs> colorful things to look at, which I think is nice. I actually really like, so I've been looking at this little mini screen up here. Yeah. What I think is actually really nice about some of these too is that there's like an immediate visual indicator that like something's yeah. good or bad. So Definitely. you have a lot of spare capacity and it's very clearly shown like, I have green, green is good, guys, yeah. green is yeah. good. Or I have red, which is like, oh shit, I'm going yeah. over this yeah, threshold. Yeah. So like, I really like being able to have like the, the immediate visual feedback of something. and you're getting really nice mathematical expressions that you didn't have to do any math yourself or have to write any custom code yep. to yeah. get that metric. Yeah. Um, a couple people in Twitch, by the way, have asked looking for the documentation for this. This is a new launch, so the documentation is on its way out, but it's part of the launch process. So uh, it'll be out sometime this afternoon, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So stay tuned, just check back in a little bit to get the uh, to get the actual launch, the, the, the documentation. Um, so last question for me, I think. Um, what do you see what do you see happening next? So we, we talked about alarming on the results of, of metrics and expressions. Kind of where do you where do you see CloudWatch and metric math heading next? Yeah, so I, I think we've talked about a big one. So this is really for the metric math specifically, this is day one. So we've got an initial set of functions. <laughs> We're gonna be adding more functions with more capabilities, probably search expressions as well, and then alarming and metric math, those are kind of obvious ones. But what I'd say, if I step back and give you a little bit broader answer, I'd say CloudWatch Roadmap is really focused around giving customers the best visibility into their applications, the best integration natively with AWS, and the, the most scale and performance and geographical reach over time. So that, that's what all our roadmap's about. We listen to our customers, and we, we take those things that are driving in that direction for them. And I think what's I think what's what's really powerful about CloudWatch too is that it's one of those things that pretty much comes right out of the box for for every service. So yep. you you always have service metrics in in CloudWatch. So being able to do extra operations on top of that and get deeper insights on your data is then some is now something that applies to a whole ton of services without you having to do any like sidecar integrations mm -hmm. or agents that you're installing on your host. So yep. um, from someone That's that does not like having to run their own agents. <laughs> I'm the laziest. Right. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to do math. I don't want to run any agents. I don't want to run any sidecars. <laughs> Apparently, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> but you like pretty graphs. So. I do like pretty yeah. graphs. Um, Twitch also likes pretty graphs apparently. <laughs> I'm also getting I'm also getting scolded because I said three quarters of a bad word like five <laughs> minutes ago. I caught myself really quick. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right, so if you have any more questions, uh, we'll pass them on to the team. Um, but thank you so much to Bob and Helen for joining me. Uh, it's been great, and we'll see you all in just a couple of minutes. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Abby. Abby.